Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventurer in the wild, vast reaches of space, missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice, travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy have made another visit to the mysterious Planet X. They have just landed in a robot ship, hoping to thwart an attempt to obtain Space Patrol's secrets. As two men in work clothes approach the ship, Buzz and Happy wait with ray guns drawn. Keep behind the bulkhead until we find out whether they're friendly or not. Yes, sir. Quiet now. We have the outer hatch. Don't move, Happy. Use your gas gun, Malengro. <laughs> Commander, I can't see. <laughs> We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, The Trap on Planet X. Hi, Space Patrollers. This is Captain Dick Tufeld speaking. Say, how's your space talk these days? Are you talking like a real Space Patroller? Well, here's some space talk that'll make your friends sit right up and listen. Fire rockets. Now, fire rockets means to turn on the motor or get ready to go, as in, come on, gang, fire rockets, it's time to go. And here's another way of saying something in space talk. Blast off. Blast off means to take off or leave. You blast off for a game of ball. Blast off to meet a pal. Now, here's space talk you hear space patrollers use every morning. Get supercharged. Now, to get supercharged means to get some zip and wham so you can be a winner. And, gang, here's how you do it. Just have yourself a power breakfast with the super cereals, rice checks, or wheat checks. Best tasting cereals from here to the moon. So, space patrollers, get supercharged. Fire rockets, blast off. And I mean to your grocers for rice checks and wheat checks. And remember, inside every package, you get a mysterious magic space picture. <laughs> And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Trap on Planet X. Commander Corey is facing the greatest problem of his career. His archenemy, Prince Baccarati, has established an empire on Planet X, a strange world far beyond the solar system where no planets were thought to exist. Fortified by almost impregnable detection and defense systems built by the evil scientific genius, Dr. Malengro, Baccarati planned to launch an attack against the United Planets. Buzz and Happy dealt the prince a temporary setback, but the actual fate of Baccarati and Malengro still is in doubt. Buzz realizes the criminal leaders from the self-styled prince assembled on Planet X may continue Baccarati's plans for enslavement and conquest. Now in his central office on Terra, Buzz reviews his strategy with Cadet Happy. At this stage of the game, Happy, Baccarati's forces hold the trump cards. Space Patrol couldn't get within a million DUs of Planet X without being discovered. Well, with Baccarati himself out of the way, sir, maybe his men will give up this idea of conquering the United Planet. Trouble is, we don't know for certain whether Baccarati is out of the way. All we know is that he turned his plastic gun on Malengro and himself and plunged down into the river at the base of his castle. I don't see how they could help being drowned, even if the fall didn't hurt them. We don't know what effect that plastic gun has. It coats its victim with a shell of plastic. We saw that. But it makes the victim temporarily helpless. At the same time, it might protect them. Yeah, that's right. Well, still, I'd hate to be in that fix. Floating down a river on Planet X, unable to swim. And remember those monsters we saw in the jungle. Well, there's no telling what's in that river. Even leaving Baccarati out of it, a full-scale attack on Planet X wouldn't be a wise solution. Baccarati has abducted hundreds of innocent people from the United Planets. He's forcing them to work for him. That's the chief reason we can't risk an all-out attack. Well, how are we going to save them? Well, that's problem number one. It's not a job for a space fleet. A few men infiltrating into Baccarati's stronghold. Into the slave camps in the north. Into the castle. Into his plants. That isn't going to be easy. No. And once they're in, they'll be useless unless they can communicate with our forces on the outside. Well, I'd like to take another crack at it, sir. Mm, so would I. But it's something we can't rush into, Happy. One wrong move could cost the lives of innocent people. I'm going to have a talk with Lieutenant Simmons and then outline a plan of action. Meanwhile, billions of miles away on Planet X, a strange creature stands on the bank of a river and peers intently at two figures stiffly floating downstream. 
The man on the riverbank is huge, nearly seven feet tall, and his rugged frame is loosely draped with the skin of an animal. To this primitive native of Planet X, the figures in the water are objects of wonder. Slowly, his lips move in response to the thought that forms in his not-too-active brain. Sky men. Sky men. The next instant, the native plunges into the water. Sky men. The men who arrived many seasons ago in great monsters. Men with powerful weapons. Men who built huts of stone that towered into the mists. But why were these two sky men floating down the river? so strangely stiff and still. The native swims toward them, then one at a time tows them to shallow water, and one under each powerful <clears throat> arm, he carries them up on the bank. <clears throat> the men seem coated with something shiny and hard and transparent. But as the native watches in surprise, the shiny covering cracks and falls away. <clears throat> the men move. The native steps back, half frightened, half curious. And one of the sky men speaks. Well, are you all right? Yes, your Highness. But I don't like the looks of that native. Don't worry. I got my plastic gun ready. I can turn him into a seven-foot statue if he starts anything. But don't show any fear. Remember, we are superior beings. Are you sure there's enough plastic left in the gun to cover a man of that size? Keep quiet. Let me do the talking. Uh, you there. What's your name? I, Goro. Ah, we're in luck, Malengo. For a minute, I was afraid he was one of those wild ones that our men hadn't taught to speak English. <clears throat> Uh, Goro, I'm the chief of the Skymen, Prince Bakarati. Goro, kneel before your prince. He is your chief. Uh, chief. Huh. All right, Goro. Uh, you may rise. Skymen live in air and in water? We are all powerful, Goro. The Skymen can do anything. Skymen, all powerful. Send him away, Your Highness. Let's get back up the river to the castle. We may need him. He may run into some unfriendly native, and Goro will confound him. Yes, you are right, Your Highness. Uh, Goro, you come with me. Your chief will give you fine clothes like these. You will eat the food of the Skymen, and Goro will become all powerful like the Skymen. Goro eat food of Skymen? Of course. And everyone will say, There is Goro, honor guard of Prince Bakarati. Come, Goro. Lead the way to my castle. I obey, Chief. Come on, Malengo. Your Highness, do you think Corey could get away from the castle? I doubt it. When we get back, we'll put some pressure on the commander. He can tell us many things that will help further my plan for conquering the universe. The fool! Good night. Stupid fools! What's the trouble, Your Highness? Those guards, they let Corey and the cadet get away. What? Yes! They got back to the jungle to their ship and blasted off. That means he'll be back with a fleet of ships. Ah, Corey's too smart to try that. He knows we could destroy every ship he sends against us. But if he thinks we were drowned when we jumped into the river, won't he assume your empire will fall apart? Now, Corey doesn't jump to conclusions. He'll try something, that's certain. Now, if we could only force his hand. Get him back here. Alone. Oh, uh, by the way, Malengro, how's Dr. Rainey coming along with that brain of that? I'll check right after we get back to the castle, Your Highness. He hasn't quite finished it yet. Well, can't you hurry him up? He's resisting our persuasive methods. He keeps falling unconscious for pain. Stubborn fool. Once we get that brain of that working, we can take all these captured scientists and technicians and find out exactly what the Space Patrol has to use against us. Every fact these men know will be revealed by the brain. We can break Dr. Rainey down, but it will take a little more time. Ah, how I'd like to use that brain of Rafa and Corey. Then we know every weapon, every plan the United Planets could bring against us. Yes, Your Highness. But Corey isn't here. He's probably back on Terra. Well, we'll bring him here. I've got just a plan. I'll need a special robot ship and your help, Malengo. Back at Space Patrol headquarters on Terra, the spaceophone monitoring section has picked up a strange message, repeated over and over. Within a few moments, the message is piped into Commander Corey's office as Buzz and Happy listen intently. I warn you, the 
plan will be dangerous, but it is the only way to penetrate Prince Baccarati's defenses. This is the voice of Professor Ramey speaking from a continuous recording tape on board a Baccarati robot patrol ship. The message will be repeated in just a moment. Smoke and rockets. Baccarati captured Professor Ramey, too. Oh, outstanding brainograph expert. Oh, well, gee, if Baccarati gets the brain of well, at least I'm glad to hear the professor's alive. The report was that he crashed on Neptune. Mm, it's the ninth top scientist Baccarati is... space patrol unit. Oh, happy the United planets are there. in danger. This is Professor Bernard Ramey of the Space Patrol Electronics Bureau. I am held captive by Prince Baccarati on a planet far beyond the solar system. No ship can approach this planet without being detected by Baccarati's defense system. You can say that again. Only Baccarati's own ships can penetrate the electronic shield. I have succeeded in hiding the recording device in this ship, which is of class G-type R-134. A ship of this type could get through the electronic field if it emits a steady signal on a frequency of 231 Point six megacycles. I warn you, the plan will be dangerous. Cut it off, Happy. But it is the only way. So that's the key to the shield. A signal at 231.6 megacycles. I wonder what happens if you're off the beam a few cycles. Mm, the ship is destroyed, probably. Well, it looks as though Professor Ramey has given us the chance we were waiting for. Yes, Happy. Call Space Patrol Operations. Order a Class G Type R134 robot spaceship with auxiliary controls. We're blasting off the planet. I've picked up a robot ship on the viewscope, Your Highness. Is it one of ours? It looks like it. But all of ours are accounted for. Well, and then Corey fell for it. He thought that was Professor Ramey's voice. The brainograph should be ready in a few hours, Your Highness. Oh, Ramey finally cracked, eh? No, but our engineers figure they'll be able to complete the brainograph now with no further help from the professor. Excellent. Now, Malengro, we'll just wait patiently until Corey enters our... I guess we've fooled Baccarati so far, Commander. At least he hasn't hurled any meteors at our robot. Well, we're safe from meteors now, Happy. We're too close to the planet. There's Baccarati's castle in the viewscope, Commander. All right, Happy. Cut on the special frequency. Yes, sir. Make sure it's exactly 231.6 megacycles. Oh, I have it tuned in exactly, sir. That's it, sir. In a few seconds, we'll know whether it gets us through the electronic shield. It worked, sir. Keep away from the viewports, Happy. We're coming in for a landing. Now we'll wait here in the ship till it gets dark. And we'll make an attempt to get inside the castle. I suppose someone comes out to inspect the ship? Yeah. Two men are coming toward the ship now. Yeah. And work clothes. Whether they're friendly or not, it's a break. You can borrow their clothes. Keep behind the bulkhead until they're well inside the ship. Have your ray gun ready. Yes, come Quiet now, Hank. You do that, Don Malengo. Quickly! It's Baccarati! Let him have it, Hank! <laughs> I can't see! I can't either! Drop it to that, Malengo. I got him, Your Highness. Oh, take that ray gun, Curry! <laughs> Uh, you might as well stop struggling, Corey. That toxic gas made you as weak as a kitten. Where is Professor Ramey? Oh, don't try to talk, Commander. Unless you're wearing gas masks. Like Dr. Melengro and myself, you'll only suffer all the more from the toxic gas. For your information, Commander, that wasn't Professor Ramey's voice you heard. It was mine. A good impersonation, don't you think? Ah, that's right, Corey. The professor was busy completing a brain of that. And we are going to use it on you. To find out all the space patrol secrets. After you recover from the toxic gas, of course. Yes, <laughs> you can recuperate in the dungeon, Corey. You just wait till you see your guard. He's a nice little fellow named Goro. You'll be safe with Goro. Very safe. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, gang, what kind of fuel are you filling up with at breakfast? Ordinary fuel? Well, I hope not. Because remember, in the morning, you haven't had anything to eat for hours. That means your fuel tank needs super fuel, like rice checks and wheat checks, the super cereals. A good checks breakfast, and boy, you're supercharged. You feel like a million, rugged as Buzz Corey himself. Your motor kicks over, your rockets start roaring, your atomolites start blinking, and man, that's it. You take off, and I mean you take off like nobody's business. 
And say, gang, with Chex, you've got a couple of cereals that taste terrific. And both have that modern bite-sized design for eating that's easy and fun. That's Chex for you. Easy eating, good eating. So remember, gang, when you pull up to your breakfast table, it's just like pulling up to a filling station. You're there for fuel, super fuel. So tomorrow morning, say to your mom, fill her up, mom, Chex. Yes, get them today, gang. Chex, rice or wheat. And remember, inside of every package, you get a mysterious magic space picture. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Trap on Planet X. Simulating the voice of the captured scientist, Prince Baccarati's henchman, Dr. Malengro, has tricked Commander Corey and Cadet Happy into returning to Planet X. The Space Patrolman passed safely through the deadly electronic shield over the castle by means of a secret frequency on their robot spaceship transmitter. But after landing, Buzz and Happy were captured by Baccarati and Malengro. Right now, they're locked in a cell in the castle dungeon with a huge native Goro standing guard outside. Doesn't look very bright. I can't always tell by appearance. I wonder if he realizes that Baccarati is making slaves out of some of the other natives, his own people. Oh, good point. Let's see what his name is. Goro, isn't he? Yes, sir. Goro. Goro, I'd like to talk to you a minute. What do you want? I'm your friend. I want to help you, Goro. I am an chief friend. You not friend. Skyman Chief? I mean, Baccarati. Goro, listen. This fellow you call Skyman Chief is Prince Baccarati. He's making slaves of your people. He makes them work underground in the mines. Do you understand? Skyman Chief, give Goro food. Be friend. You bad. Goro, no. Goro, if you'll help us out of here, we'll see that you get better food than Baccarati ever gave you. I'm an chief, all powerful. You not powerful. How can you give food? He's got a friend. He's no fool, Happy. He just can't think any further ahead of the next meal. Uh, speaking of food, I wish Baccarati would show up with some chai. Hey, I just remembered. Yeah, I, I think it's here in my jacket pocket. What? Some space rations. Yeah, I've got a bar of ration G here. Baccarati missed it when he frisked me. I'll break off a small piece of it, Happy. Yes, sir. Here you are, Goro. Taste it. Well, that not food. Goro, man, not small bird. Go on, reach your hand to the bar. Just try it. Goro, try. Oh, look at the size of that hand. It'll barely go through the bars. Good. Good. Like it, Goro? Goro, want more. Commander, look out. He's trying to grab you. More food. More food. Hold on, Goro. Take it easy. Open the door and let us out. You can have the whole bar. More food. You understand? Open the door. More! More! Goro, wait a minute. Be quiet. He really goes for it, but he's so excited he's nearly out of his mind. Doesn't know how to open the door, Happy. Not with the regular controls, anyway. Put the ration bar on the floor near the back of the cell, but where Goro can see it. That's it. Now come over here by the door. More! More! Goro, hold it. Listen to me. More food! Now, there's your food back there. We want you to have it. Just open the door. Pull on the bars. Send the bars. Put your hands on them and pull. More! Harder, Goro! That's it! Oh, he's bending them. You're getting it, Goro. Uh, there goes the door. And here comes Goro. Come on, Hap, let's go. Goro like. He's better than Skyman, Chief. Oh, Skyman, Goro. Down this part, a happy place of story. Find Baccarati before a guard finds her. How many more flights is it to the tower, sir? Take him to that door there quickly. Put your hand over his mouth, Happy. Yep. Now let's get him in here. I've got his gun, Happy. The next wall in there. Yes, sir. Corey, how did you get out of that sand? Never mind what I'm doing. Where's Baccarati? Come on, where is he? He's up in the tower. Alone? Tell me the truth, Malango. If he's with some engineers. How about Professor Rainey? Where have you got him? Down at the end of the hall, locked in another room. All right, get going. Lead the way and don't try anything. This is it. Unlock the door. 
door happy and keep the lingo covered. Yes, sir. Professor. Professor Ramey. Lingo, what have you done to him? Dr. Riley was a little rough with him. He wrecked the brain again. Months of work ruined. The professor's coming too, sir. Professor. Quick, Commander Malengro's getting away. Get him happy. Yes, sir. Well, that takes care of him. Good. The professor. Professor Ramey. It won't do you any good, Barker I... Commander Corey. Yes. Our capote has been forcing me to build a brain again. When I heard he tricked you into coming here, I left. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, I Professor, we haven't much time. We've got to get out of here. Can you walk? I think so. Oh. Dr. Roddy gave you quite a beating. you know of any places where we could get a ship? Dr. Roddy's spaceship factory. That's too far away. Besides, it has an electronic shield around it, too. Well, at least once we get out of the castle... Wait. Wait a minute. There's a robot testing field on the other side of the valley. Does it have an electronic shield over it? Not ordinarily. One can be set up if strange ships are sighted in the region of the planet. Ordinarily, it's kept open for tests. Can you show us how to get out of the castle? The gates have electronic locks. Only Baccarati's men have to... Malengo must have one. Search him, Hacker. Yes, sir. Professor, how far is it across the valley to the testing field? Well, I don't know exactly. Uh, around five miles, I think. Do you feel strong enough to make it? Malengo is too, sir. I think I can make it, Commander. And then come on. We'll tie Malengo up and gag him so he can't come to and sound him around. Malengo, what happened to you? Where's the professor? Oh, stop, man, and hold still till I get the gag out of your mouth and untie you. Corey did it. He caught me in the hall. Corey! How do you think you're out of the dungeon? Never mind, where's Professor Ramey? I don't know. The cadet knocked me out. When I came to, I was tied up. You've escaped, George. I can see that. We'll have the castle searched from bow to the dungeon. We'll send guards outside the castle. You and I will lead the search from the air. Come on, man. The test port is right up ahead, sir. You can see a ship through the field. Oh, hold it, Hatter. Don't let anyone see it. We're almost there, Professor. I've got to stop a moment. Well, that's all right. Take your breath. We may have to make a rush for a ship. I don't see anyone at this side of the field, Commander. But there's some men working on a ship about 300 yards down to the right there. Well, we can't afford to make a mistake now. Commander, those aren't all robot patrol ships. Some of them are battle cruisers. You're right, huh? These are. are what Dr. Roddy is turning out at his factory several hundred miles from here. They must have been brought here for a test. Oh, they're as big as our space between the battle cruisers. And from their looks, they could make a good account of themselves. They've all got the black ball painted on them. Baccarati's insignia. So they're here for a test, huh? All right, let's test one. Ready, Professor Ramey? Uh, yes, Commander. Let's make a rush for the nearest one. Come on. Velocity down, Malengo. Remember, this is a spaceship, and Corey is on foot. I'm trying to cover as much ground as possible, Your Highness. If we circle the castle several times, we can pick them up in the ground scan. Uh, where could they have gone? They are not in the castle. No one saw them go through the gate. Look, over there at the test. I see it. It's one of my new battle cruisers taking off. But why, Your Highness? They just arrived today from your plant to the north. Weren't your orders to really affect the field to be grounded until you inspect them tomorrow? Huh? Yeah, that's right. Well, wait till we locate Corey. Then I'll find out where that upstart pilot is. Ah, look at my ship, Lando. Two complete squadrons lined up. They are quite beautiful, Your Highness. Yes. And after months of planning, they're almost ready. Ready to make a surprise attack on a space patrol. When the test is successful tomorrow, I'll give the command to wipe out Jupiter. Look at that ship circling back over the field. The big Jupiter base out of the battle. I can conquer the other planet. What's happening over there? An explosion at the test port. One of your ships blew up on the ground. My ship? Malengo, what's happening? That pilot, that crazy pilot, he's tracing my ship to the space gunner. He's uh, Corey. Malengo is Corey in that ship. Get him! After him! Got the command! Your Highness is a scout. He's unarmed. 
That does it, sir. Everything on the test field, at any rate. That's what the infrared view scope shows. They talk about a month to build another. Happy, keep at low altitude till we get to the opposite side of Planet X, then blast off into space. And that way we can dodge any of Baccarati's defense rays. Yes, sir. We've given Prince Baccarati a severe setback, Commander. Yeah, and with one of his own ships. A setback isn't enough, gentlemen. As long as Planet X is a menace to freedom loving people anywhere in the universe then Prince Baccarati can count on meeting me again. A preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure follows in just a moment. Gang, this is Captain Dick Tufeld at an aqua jet boat race on Mars. My favorite's the shooting star. But hey, it doesn't have a chance. The driver is filling up the tank with ordinary fuel. See what I mean? No zip, no zoom, no zing. Hey, but wait. Now the driver's putting in some super fuel. Wow! Look at the shooting star go. It's bound to be a winner now because she's supercharged. Supercharged with super fuel. Now, you want to be a winner, too, don't you, gang? Then remember, ordinary fuel, ordinary start. Super fuel, super start. So don't wait. Get supercharged. And I mean get supercharged the way Buzz Corey does. Eat a power breakfast with rice checks. Flavor, mmm, man. And bite size. Crisp, triple toasted shredded rice biscuits. That's rice checks. And inside every package, you get a mysterious magic space picture. <laughs> and now, a preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are trying to make their way through a strange valley filled with weird and poisonous plants. Suddenly, Happy trips and falls. <coughs> Commander, something's got my foot. It's the vines. They're drawing tight like ropes. They're winding around me, too. I, I can't get them untangled. Maybe we can cut them loose. Yeah. Hey, it's grabbed my arm. I, I can't move. And the leaves, the leaves have got suckers on them. Happy, we've got to get loose. These vines are man-eaters. Be sure to join us again next week for the thrilling story, The Valley of Bread, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Wilson again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Special bulletin for boys and girls in Cleveland, Ohio, and Rochester, New York. Buzz Corey's own space battle cruiser, the Ralston Rocket, will be in your area next week. Don't miss it, the Ralston Rocket! <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. <laughs> Other players were Baylor Kovach, Ken Mayer, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufeld speaking. <laughs> now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Check, Rice Check, and Good Hut Wilson again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service.